Every prepper out there is gonna tell you that the most important thing that you can learn to do as a prepper is to survive. But that's wrong. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. I have no idea what advertisement played before this video. I don't know what company it was and I don't know what it was selling. But whatever good or service they were offering to you, how do you think your life would be different? Would your life be different? Would your life be better? Would your life be happier? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Prepping and preparedness is something that is seen by people as a way of surviving. But surviving for what purpose? Surviving to just live in misery, there's not really much point to that. The idea is that you can survive so that you can live, you can survive so that you can be happy. The point isn't the surviving, the point is the happiness, and you need to survive in order to be happy, but ultimately, happiness is the point. And I think that's something that is forgotten oftentimes in the discussions here on prepping channels, and in terms of happiness being a discussion, a topic that comes up in our society at large, it does get discussed, but it gets discussed in all the wrong ways, people get led in all the wrong directions, and the evidence for that is a simple fact that there are so many people who are dissatisfied, who are unhappy, who are lonely in our culture. Our culture offers solutions uh, for how to live a good quality, happy life. But the vast majority of those solutions involve some sort of good or service, some sort of economic exchange occurring. We all have heard the, the phrase, you know, the best things in life are free, but the problem with things being free is that nobody's paying for them, and that is a big problem for our economy. So the way that our Western uh, civilization tends to approach happiness is through this sort of sovereign individual consumerist lens, where you just have to acquire the right things, live in the right place, uh, you know, engage yourself in the right services, go on the right vacation, and that is going to you know, provide you with the happiness that you're looking for. All of the advertising uh, tends to, you know, push the idea of, you know, you're hanging out with your friends and you're all drinking Coca-Cola at the same time. So they're pushing these visuals of people being happy and people being near each other. But the solution for that is that you should all drink Coca-Cola. Or the solution for that is that you should all, you know, drive the right car. If you have the right car, people are going to respect you more. And if people respect you more, there are going to be people that are going to be sort of drawn to you. Uh, that's sort of like the social idea that, you know, if you buy the right products, uh, people are going to respect you. It's not about building yourself into being someone who is worthy of respect. It's about buying your way there. As a society, we have a terrible track record when it comes to helping people to fulfill their happiness. And what's ironic about this is that in our society, uh, there are a lot of people who really attack the idea of prepping. What is the number one thing you hear uh, when you, you're a prepper and people are confronted with that idea? What is the number one thing that we all hear? I'll give you a moment to think about it. It's that we're living in fear. Nobody says, oh, you preppers, you're just living in happiness all the time. The idea is that if you're into prepping and you're into preparedness, if you're into the idea of protecting your family, supporting your family, putting in effort for the idea of caring for your loved ones and you know trying to create a safe and supportive environment for them, if you're into those things, you're living in fear that those people, you know, might not have that and because of that you know you're not living up to your happiness potential you're not living your best life you're throwing your life away uh, for frivolous things like trying to support and foster your your family and I want to push back against that in this video and, and I probably already have enough I know my videos have a reputation for going on and on and I think that I've already kind of given you guys my hand on this is that while people tend to see prepping and preparedness as being fixated on fear Prepping and preparedness is the, it is the manifestation of the very act of loving your family by creating this kind of safe, warm, loving, cozy bubble for your family. As, as a human being, as an organism, as a living thing, 
That is what gives us pleasure. That is what gives us satisfaction. I can't speak to being a woman. I, I've never been one. I don't plan on being one at any point in time in the future, although maybe I'll add that to my tagline at the beginning of these videos. But as a male, I get an enormous amount of satisfaction from the idea of providing for my family, protecting my family, supporting my family, lifting my family up to a place where they can be living their lives. I assume it's very similar for women as well, but again, not having been one, I can't speak with experience on that. But I know that in our society, what is oftentimes pushed for men, especially in this, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff here on YouTube, but this like kind of like red pill thing and, uh, you know, men are, you know, they shouldn't be interested in having a family. They shouldn't be in interested in finding, uh, you know, some woman in order to, uh, you know, start a relationship with and, you know, mutually foster and support each other. The idea is that, you know, you know women are also horrible that, you know, they're not even worth it. So you should just be an independent, uh, you know, soul, man, and that's your, your route to happiness. And nothing could be further from the truth. As a male, you know, we want to have a family that we can love and support and putting in the labor, putting in the hard work, you know, getting the, the you know, paint on your hands and, you know, bloodying up your knuckles towards, you know, reaching that end, it gives men, myself, an enormous amount of satisfaction that you know you just don't get by getting like the newest release of an iPhone. You don't get it by getting a new car. Biologically, men at least are hardwired to get these wonderful feelings of satisfaction and happiness by caring for their family, caring for their loved one, uh, supporting them and putting in the hard muscly work to make that happen. And you know, from my own perspective in particular, the harder, the more satisfaction that I get out of it in terms of uh, you know, the feeling at the end of the day when you are exhausted, when you are sore, when you are dirty, where you, you are sweaty, you take a shower at the end of the day, and you feel like you really gave it your all for your family that day, th that gives me way more satisfaction than any kind of vacation or, you know, you know, pile of cash or, you know, new product or whatever. And, you know, that doesn't really get pushed in our society uh, now. You know, now what gets pushed in our society is that, uh, I, I guess, Men essentially should be women and women essentially should be men. You know, men should be docile. And, you know, you see always see like the advertisements, uh, you know, there's a husband and a wife. It used to be uh, like an old advertising. Uh, it was uh, kind of the, the go to to portray the wife as being the idiot. It's like, oh, this ditzy wife, she doesn't know how to you know, do X, Y or Z. And, you know, the husband comes home and he knows, you know, how to do whatever. So that was like an archetype in old marketing that the, the, the wife was an idiot and the husband was there to like save the day. Uh, well, we've just kind of flipped that with modern marketing and you know, you guys have all seen it where uh, there's the, the woman and she's really on top of everything and there's the guy and he's like, he's an idiot. And uh, you know, he has this idea that he's gonna paint a wall himself or he's gonna hammer in a nail himself and he, he tries and it just turns into a disaster. And the woman, the woman knows cause she's not an idiot that you know, they should have hired you know, this professional to uh, to have hammered in that nail or painted that wall or whatever, because you know you can't do it yourself. Whether you're a man or a woman, you know women know women know enough to know that they're idiots and their husbands are idiots. So neither one of them should be engaged in you know, directly doing any of the tasks that relate to their their home, because you know we should be hiring people for that to keep the the economy going. In the past, in marketing of the past, the result was to re remove women from all sorts of tasks that very well may have given them pleasure. And I'm not going to enumerate on what those are or talk to them specifically because again, not being a woman, I don't you know, know from personal experience what that is. But I knew, do know as being a man, the idea of you know this kind of modern marketing where it says, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't move that boulder, you can't build that shed, you can't paint this, you can't paint that. Sure, there are a lot of idiot guys out there. I'll grant that. But, but even with those idiot guys, if they do something and it just goes terribly wrong, they're going to learn from it. And the next time around, they're going to be a little bit wiser and they'll, you know, they'll know how to do it a little bit better. And the simple act of putting in that effort, that, that kind of muscle sweat equity uh, in you're providing for your family in that kind of direct way. It's not about going to the store and buying bread. It is about making that bread yourself, watching it rise, baking it yourself. There is so much more satisfaction that you get from making a loaf of bread, baking that yourself, slicing that yourself, and seeing you know your family enjoy that loaf of bread versus you know just like tossing some money uh, to somebody at the store and uh, you know you know purchasing it. When you go to the store, it's a chore. 
when you do it at home, it's something that you can, you know, pour your energy, pour your muscles into. Now, not that it takes that much muscles for bread, although I guess the kneading a little bit. But the idea is that you get so much more satisfaction, and there is so much more reward by doing things yourself, providing for your family yourself, and prepping and preparedness is the ultimate in providing for your family yourself. You are not presuming that somebody else is going to step in there. There is nobody that is going to come in there and they are going to, you know, fix your car for you or paint that wall for you or hammer that nail in for you or come to your house if there's someone trying to break into your house and that is a legitimate reality. Uh, you know, when the police get called, they come and they clean up after the crime. That's just the, the reality of it. So acknowledging a lot of those things puts you in a position to be the direct caretaker for your family. And whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, I can't say enough that it is really a wonderful feeling to have that direct relationship with your family where you are the one directly supplying those services to them. You are the one directly watching out for them. You haven't subbed it out to, you know, some company or, you know, some government or, you know, some organization somewhere. You are the one providing those services. And when you do, it gives you an enormous feeling of satisfaction, an enormous feeling of joy, and, you and you'll be robbed of that. You'll be robbed of living that life, that life of satisfaction, seeing your family grow and flower through your efforts. And so many people are having that life, that happy life, that potential happy life stolen from them, whether it is this like red pill thing where it's telling men that all women are terrible and they shouldn't, you know, um, they shouldn't look for anyone to find as a life partner, whether it's, you know, the same kind of thing on the other side where it's toxic femininity, femininity where, you know, uh, there's these messages that tell women that all men are terrible. So they shouldn't, you know, women shouldn't bother to, you know, find a man to, you know, uh, connect up with and, uh, you know, create a family that way. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not at all addressing like, you know, gay people or any of that kind of stuff. But the point is you find someone that you can feel compatible with, that you can feel like you uh, can build a loving relationship with. And the act of caring for that other person, whether it's you caring for them or they them caring for you, is going to give you both an enormous sense of satisfaction, an enormous sense of happiness, and prepping and preparedness is key to that because it is internalizing all those actions, all those things to care for and protect yourself and the people around you directly. And it's that direct nurturing that makes all the difference. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, this video was all about loving family connections and that's an important topic. But you know what else is important? Comedy. <laughs> this video over here is a very short video that I created for another channel that I post videos on. It's a comedy piece. It involves a loving family connection between a grandparent and their children and it has a terrifying twist ending that you'll never see coming.